Hello and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda. That was a bumblebee behind me then. Um, so much to do. So little time to do it in. I've got to get 60 potato plants, or 60 pot seed potatoes planted today. I've also got to get um, these onions out behind me and shallots. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a task that because I haven't got that much time really. I've only got about two and a half hours, three hours maximum. So uh, yeah, this time of year is the busy time. And unfortunately, yesterday was a write off. Not a write off because we did all sorts of good stuff with the boys, with the lads. Um, I might show a clip of that later on. But yeah, didn't get much work done down at the plots. This is the this is the trouble when you're working full time and uh, you're trying to run two plots. I sound like a moaning get, don't I? But uh, it, that that is an issue, the time issue. You don't have enough time to keep on top of everything. I've got loads of brassicas that that, that definitely need to go out, but that's gonna, that's going to have to be done in the week. So, but we're going to get the potatoes out, or oh, two thirds of the of the remaining seed potatoes out, and uh, and the onions. I've got my eye on a couple of beds for the onions, but another thing that we're struggling with at the moment is space. I think I've been a victim of my own success with the seed sowing, and we've got tons, and we've not got a great deal of space to put them in. Got loads of buckets, and we've got these bags of compost behind me. Yeah, I've got 11 altogether. There's another bag up there, a compost. But that's all going to be taken up by um, the potatoes. So I'm going to need more of that. Let's get cracking. We're not going to do it by just chatting, are we? And I uh, didn't get the potatoes and onions out today either. Because of these buggers that are coming up next. But my first job is going to be getting rid of all of those dandelions Luke it's already burst one of them and turned into a sugar stealer so I'm going to be head then dead at them all put them in here and get shut of those first I'm going to clear all of this out because they'll just turn into a new dandelion we don't want dandelion although it is a famine food you can eat it uh, we don't want it a weed is a plant that's growing where you don't want that plant to grow and we don't want them plants to grow there. You see how prolific these are? I mean, these are the, the flowering heads. You just pull them off all right. But you can notice then that underneath there's many more coming through. Each little dent de lion or dandelion, tooth of the lion, produces many a flower head. And then they turn into the sugar stealers. Spread about a hundred odd seeds every time to create more. Look at them all. These little heads. So you've got to have a route through, really. Find them all. Otherwise, you'll be pulling them up again in a couple of days. Which you inevitably will be doing anyway, but uh, the more you can pluck out at once the better keep them down that's horse's tail another hardy perennial yeah millions of them isn't there just from that little spot Right, I've got my work cut out, I'm half an hour here. Off with their heads. That's what you want. Just behead them. Look at these poor buggers. They're outgrowing the little cells, obviously, and um, they're not getting the nutrition that they need. It's also too hot for them inside Tiki Tunnel 2. Trouble is, I've nowhere to put them right now, so all I'm thinking I'm going to be able to do with them is 
select the ones that I want to keep and pop them on into bigger pots, four times as big as they're in at the moment, and get them outside. Leave it with me. Let's crack on. Okay, so currently they're in those cells there. I'm going to transplant them into these bigger pots. Those ones. Now it's only going to be a temporary measure. They'll probably last about another couple of weeks inside there. But it's all I can think of for the time being. Until I can get them in the big pots. The big old pots. Which are the 10 inch Asda buckets. But um, yeah. Needs must I think. I'm going to give it a whirl. Okay guys there's our usual potting mix. Into that I'm going to throw. A sprinkling. Of the organic chicken manure. And I'm going to root that all the way through so it's all mixed and mingled in plus about the same amount of uh, blood fish and bone and get it all mixed in together that's going to give them plenty of feed then to keep them going until they can be potted further on but that's going to do six of those um well seven of those sorry but i'll mix it all in together well and that'll give them the feed and the nitrogen that they need. The bone meal will give them enough um, to fire up those roots and get those pots filled with root so that they're ready for planting on them when the time comes in about two weeks. Okay, so we've potted some of them on. Uh, the Calabrese, there's four there of the Calabrese, the green Calabrese. Broccoli to the uninitiated. Initiated. I can't speak. There's six actually. There's six Calabrese. There's four of the kale. And there's uh, nine of the Pak Choi that have all been potted on. I'm going to do the same with those later, but I've not got enough time tonight because I've got to get the uh, the beans started off. Um, the Greek Gigantes broad beans started off as well. But these can't stay in here. These got to be taken out and uh, and moved into a netted spot outdoors it's still too warm for him in here so let's find a spot for these guys that should do them for the time being inside Bradley's cage now the reason they've got to go outside is obviously it's too hot for them inside now they've got to benefit from a good feed there as well in the soil they should be fine in there hopefully as long as I keep that tray filled up with water and I keep the cabbage white cabbage white butterflies off them inside this tent. The job should be a good one. So I'm going to fill that up with water now. For my water butts that are on the Seeky Hut. Let's go for it. I love my Seeky Hut. It's ace. Right. Water's in. All we need to do now is that, and uh, yeah, cabbage whites are kept out. I've scoured the earth in there. There's not a not a leaf to be found, a weed to be found. But what we are going to be having to get is. A solution for the slug issues because there will be some and I'm pretty sure that there's also a hole I need to deal with <coughs> so yeah there's a couple of holes there I did see an advanced scout yesterday of the cabbage white butterfly variety although tonight I haven't seen any I've seen a red admiral, a red admiral butterfly, but I've not seen the cabbage white. But that's got to be fixed. Fixed. With a couple of zipper ties. Now, if you leave any holes for them, they'll creep in and they'll lay their eggs on your brassicas. And then you'll have no brassicas. So you've got to protect them, 
especially around here you do because we've got uh, both types of cabbage white butterfly butterfly we've got the greater and the lesser or the lesser than the greater if you want it that way around we've got both types and um, yeah they're a pain in the backside in America I think they call it the cabbage looper something like that in North America but it is a bane it's a pain and every year they come out they hatch around this time of year when the Sun comes out and you'll get it now sort of uh, early spring you'll have a flush of them and then what tends to happen over here is you'll have a final sort of a huzzah for winter in about two weeks time and that'll kill a few of them off but then after that June maybe mid-May mid-May really mid to late May uh, they'll come out again in force and they'll be around for about eight weeks and anything that's a leafy green like that they'll devastate and I mean devastate if they find your plot full of uh, brassica, cabbages, cauliflower, anything like that, they'll just lay their eggs on it, the, the eggs hatch, the caterpillars come out, and you'll, you can have 40 or 50 caterpillars just eating each plant, riddling it with holes, and eventually it's not worth, uh, not worth cropping at all. So they've got to be protected. Right, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. I'm Guru Mafinda. This has been uh, a pleasure as ever. If you're a lady, you're beautiful, feminine and fragrant. If you're a gentleman, potentially, you're forthright masculine and virile, but, uh, you know, we can't all of it our own way, can we? I'll catch you later on, boys and girls. Take care of yourselves and each other. We love you all. See you later. Tomorrow we'll be doing more of the same. Potting on. And then on Wednesday, I'm hoping to get more potatoes out. Everything's just going boom in here. Look at this. Certainly these need to go out, these onions. And shallots. I've got some shallots there as well. Look at all these, and here we're going to get plenty of splitting of those shallots, hopefully. Tiddly hand. Yeah, there's loads of stuff to go out. Um, and not enough time to do it, really. I've got to go back into work in uh, about ten minutes and drive up to Warrington. Um, drop my mate's car off, Aidy's car off. And pick up my car. And then tomorrow Mark's got to come back to our house, pick up his car that he's lent me and drive that back we'll see how we get on it's good being busy rather than not busy isn't it, it's good but we've got to get the plants out like I say, look at all these it'll be another two or three weeks at least before I can get that sweet corn out onto the plot because we don't want to put it out and then, I get, then a frost come so yeah, it's a bit of a juggling act you established gardeners will know that at the moment and it's not worth putting them out too early it's just that they're going to be pretty big by the time they uh, they're ready for going out these i'm going to have to split them up into um, their own pots so i may need to buy more pots because i've run out of pots as you can see I've got pots all over the place pots galore yeah so, uh, yeah, they're going to have to be split down into, um, where we'll are we looking? Something like this. Something like that. Maybe deeper, maybe a deeper pot than that, actually. Something like you saw me actually potting on um, the cabbages and whatnot before in... I think that would be probably more appropriate because you want that root growth, you want the roots to seek down, so you want a pretty deep, rather tall, deep pot for them. And I've got 48 of them there. So I need 48 pots in the room to put them in. So that's why all this stuff, all the alliums, are well overdue really for going out. They need to get outside. 
otherwise they'll be bolting inside here and we won't get any onions off them it's a bloody juggling act boys and girls right i'll catch you later have a good one as i said before and uh i'll see you tomorrow bye bye folks